this way. And we're back. Okay. Thank you. Spotting typos and all. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to go into the bizarre on this one here. And uh, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, there is an, an urban legend, okay, that has been around since before I was a kid. And there's a small group of houses at the top of the Araby Cove. And you're serious. You've never heard of Munchkinville before. Well, no, but I'm very familiar with the rock houses. Yes. I've been in them. I know the owners. Uh, me, me too, yes. Oh, yes, David. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, well, um, when I was a kid, and this was already something old to be done because it was passed on to me by other kids who, who had gone through high school, is that the, those houses were claimed to have been built by midgets from the Wizard of Oz who wanted to be a part of Palm Springs Celebrity Heyday but didn't want to be a spectacle. And so they built some smaller than average homes up at the top of Araby Cove using just the natural rock that was gathered from the land. Mm -hmm. And they lived there. Mm -hmm. And so inevitably, on some Friday or Saturday night, usually with somebody's older brother or sister driving the car, maybe even some alcohol or some smoke involved, uh, you'd say, well, let's go to Munchkinville. And you'd go up there, and because it's on a little cul-de-sac, okay, mm -hmm. you'd drive around, it'd be dark, and you couldn't see it all very good. And uh, you'd go, and then you'd see somebody in a window, and you'd be like, oh my goodness, there they are, Arr! and you'd peel out and you'd drive away. And that was an occurrence that probably happened so many times, it's a reason now that the road is barred, yes, so that nobody can is, go yes, up there. Private road okay, there. but in those days, that's what you did, and it was called Munchkinville. And I know that for at least 20 years longer, because 20 years later, I had a couple of nieces going to Palm Springs High, and when I told them the story, they're like, oh yeah, we still do that. So it no had gone on for decades, and may still be going on to some degree. I mean, I'm passing on the legend of it now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the truth is, it was not built by midgets from the Wizard of Oz wanting to be it. If I bring up Munchkinville on Google Maps, and let me, uh, I need They're to do sale, this you know. again, okay, so that I can do this. If I switch here now and go to Google Maps, okay, this is the area that's known as Munchkinville. Okay, and if we back it out, the audience can see that uh, we're, we're over this way here right now. Um, am I right there? Here we are. Okay, we're right here by Ralph's, okay, in the Smoke Tree Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. So if you went on Highway 111 and then took Araby Drive, mm -hmm. where's Araby Drive? Here we go. Through the Araby Cove up here at the top, okay, there used to be a spot here on the end where it was just kind of a flattened lot. Mm -hmm. It's still there, but the it owner was. You're right, with the, the owner next to oh, I'm at Bob Hope's house. I'm sorry, you've got to go here. Now, right here, there's a uh, uh, just a flat. But the owner with the last home now puts out cones and uh, prevents cars from from going up there easily. But there is a fire break road that is made out of dirt that comes over to this little cluster of homes right here. And you and I both know the owner of those, but most mm -hmm. people have not been into these homes. And so the the level of knowledge of people not knowing anything about it or knowing the legend. I'm going to share some of the truth here, and I'm glad that you've been through them because you'll uh, you'll be able to add to this part of the One conversation. One person owns three. Correct. Well, three yeah. and a half. Okay, because you've got actually five homes up there. Okay, if I zoom in just a little bit closer. Well, oh. yes, it is three and a half because he's with the. He's with John Westman. John on the Westman yeah. on the other one, and a lot of land, and one woman owns the other, and it's. A very popular vacation rental. Correct. The one over here on the left, if I do the little zoom on my mouse, that one is uh, the most operational, in yes. my opinion, of all the homes. Yes. And she runs it as a vacation rental. This area over here is actually a pool that is no longer functioning uh, on that there. And then you have some other buildings that have just deteriorated so much that there's nothing of note there. But uh, these houses, if we go from this one to this one, to there, to here, and actually I think this house, go, or this is a garage if I remember right on that there, and then this house down at the bottom of the screen. This is the one owned with John Westman and actually has the largest chunk of land that mm. goes with it uh, on that there. Uh, this one over here on the right is currently being lived in, mm -hmm. or at least last I knew from a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I believe it still is now. Mm -hmm. This one right here 
is in a very decrepit status and uh, uh, probably has walls with holes in it and torn down and a roof that doesn't hold out the water anymore and that there. And then this one, um, to me, could be revived on it, but was in very poor shape uh, on the inside, um, these here. But they're very unique. Uh, th the real story is on them. In the 1930s, there was a blacksmith in Palm Springs. I can't remember his name, but there was an article once in one of the local magazines that, that was printed on it. I dare say Palm Springs Life on it, but it may not have been them. It could have been another one. But there was a blacksmith who owned the land up here and wanted to do his own little subdivision development and didn't want to have to hire out for many of the trades and literally gathered the rocks up from the land and built the exterior walls, just slathering the rocks with cement and stacking them. And that's why some of the walls are very wide at the bottom and get narrower yes, as they yes. go up. Handmade the doors. Um, the, the window frames, I believe they're handmade. We're going to look at some pictures here in just a second as we go through it. But um, it was built by a man of average or below average means who built a little development of about five houses and then planned to subdivide the properties. Um, if we look at these... Do, right, do you yeah. know if he... If people lived in all of them, or did he live there, or...? Over time, yes, people lived in them. Um, as little as about a decade ago, um, where's my search bar on, uh, oh, right here, uh, 2540 um, South Araby Drive, Palm Springs. Did I get that right? Or did no, that that's okay, so that's one of the addresses. So based on this, See, I think if I get rid of that, I'm trying to remember how I do it. That's what I want to do. So, based on that, just for a, an easy, quick CMA, uh, I want to click there. Zillow gives it um, prices in the million plus range. Okay. Now, to me, that's primarily land value in that area. Um, the one that's further south here, okay, on it is so hillside, it's incredibly yes, difficult to build right, on. That's right. Um, you might be able to squeeze in a little bigger property. That's the one David has with Westman. Right. That's right. the one where he's a half on Right. It. And then this one here where it's registered at 1.12 on it is actually two homes, the one that is in such decrepit state that I, I don't know. I'm sure it could be revived by the right builder. And the other one which David lives, lives in on it, which is better, but... Uh, needs work and then this one over here for the 1.05 is more used for storage uh, you're that there mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, not his best storage okay when it comes to it. the views off the backs of these homes because of the elevated land on them right. is really spectacular awesome. amazing but, um, if you look at if can we keep oh, no, I can't keep in the property lines this one goes quite a bit back but that's almost all hillside and I mean a steep hillside mm -hmm. uh, for it there too whereas these ones over here, you have the wash that drops in behind them, so it, it becomes much lower, but there is enough fairly level land there that something could be done with them. Um, let's go back to, not here, there. Okay, David let me go in there in 2016. Okay, and at the time I gathered up some information. I, I tried to do really good at saving information over the years because I never know where I'm going to be able to use it. So as you can see here at the time, I got a plot map from the county, which matches the lines that Zillow put on them there. But if we go through the pictures, see if I can get this, pictures for 2540. This is the one that he owns half with Westman. Mm -hmm. on that there right. but you you can see it. they're just natural rock with yeah. uh very you know crude windows at the time they were probably cutting edge mm -hmm. and as you'll see in some of the <laughs> that uh, uh if i had them i would really want to keep them intact i i understand that uh, david was shopping us both against each other a few years back for for yes, listing I, he he invited me to see the rock houses because I'd seen his other properties, and I spent a couple of hours up there with him. And he, 
told me a lot of interesting stuff about the property in general, and he was the one that told me about the woman down the street, how successful she was in her... Uh, he, he told me too. But by now they've put a gate there, you know, it washed out, and then they had to go through all sorts of shenanigans to get the road built, but now they have a, a gate, so you just can't go in and out of there. You have Correct. to have the permission of right. either he or the lady, the other lady. A gate with a real lock on it, too. Yes, right. Yes. Exactly. Now, this is the home that David lives in, okay, which um, this is not a great picture of it. You'll see it from some other angles. It is livable as we look at it, but uh, uh, the current owner does not do much uh, repairs, even <laughs> though he lives in it. But he flies the flag on the one that he lives in. He <laughs> does, this yeah. is one of the outdoor patios, mm -hmm. which I mean, I, I hope the viewers can see the promise of what this could be. And yet it is functioning as its intended purpose yeah, of a covered is. patio area. And it's built out of stone, so it's mm -hmm. not falling down. Right. You know, it's, when were they built? In the 30s? In the 30s. I don't have an exact date yeah. on me, but... Um, 90 years ago. One yes. Or the other way. Mm. This is the front door, mm -hmm. okay, going into it. And another thing, if we go back to the legend of it being midgets, one of the reasons that it was easy to believe that urban legend of it was that on most of these houses you step down a little bit to go into it. If you'll notice here, it's kind of hard to see, but at the very bottom here, the ground going in is slightly higher, and I think there's a step here mm -hmm. going into it. Mm -hmm. So imagine yourself a teenager, drunk at night, looking at it and already being told the houses are going to look like they're two to three feet shorter than they actually are. That's right. Okay. That is, yeah, that is right. Yes, because I was surprised when I went in there that I wasn't, you know, crun crunching down. So, yeah. This is an outdoor staircase going up to the roof mm. of it. Okay, and that's what the roof looks like, which I think it, at the time was still keeping out the water mm -hmm. on it. But look at the view that you start picking up out back. That is a very seldom seen mm -hmm. kind of view in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a one bedroom on, on this one here. This was a fairly good size. It was probably somewhere around a thousand square feet mm -hmm. because there was a living room and there was an extra room that you had to walk through in order to get to the bedroom where I mean, just, I don't know, it was a little Well, I wasn't funky invited design. to the bedroom area. I just oh. saw the, uh, we, there was sort of an out, door, there's your door. I, I was going to say, you're going to be invited into the bedroom here in just a second. Th yes. That's the front door with the screen open. And it's. Uh, that is, that is gorgeous. It's, I mean. It's, and the steps down into the house. Yes. And it's got to be original on that. Yeah. Looking into the living room there, I mean, with the wall air conditioner unit on it. And, and those lovely drapes. Um, they are nice, yes. But I see, the uh, again, the promise of what it could be. Oh, it could I, be gorgeous. I, I, at some point in uh, the present owner's life, he will probably sell this, and somebody is going to get a huge chunk of money. I mean, the land itself, to me, is highly valuable. But these houses, I mean, would qualify for historical significance yeah. in my yes. mind. That is one of the outdoor patio areas there, and I always wish that tree was gone but because the view would be even better okay without it but mm. i'm sure uh, the shade is appreciated the fireplaces in these were very cool now uh, i was in there you were was, uh, yes i was in there i recall seeing that's his house right yes this is that's the one he's house. living in yes i was all through that i was there we chatted for a couple of hours about all manner of things he was going to go to europe then but he life changed for him and uh, he's remained there I talked to him probably six months ago I think uh, David is just one of those old Palm Springs souls that would rather live here than anywhere else that's right you know and um, so he does you know and he yeah. can I mean these houses I'm yes. sure were long ago paid yes, for yes he has family in Germany, in Germany. So, yes. but he keeps saying he's going to go there he's going to go there uh, yeah, I think right. he is, uh, a visit will probably be it. Right. Um, one of the things that uh, David made me laugh about was that, of course, I mean, the conversation in the beginning was about Munchkinville. He called me out of the blue because I had written a Facebook post and that got shared onto some magazine article somewhere. And it was one of my most visited posts that I ever did. There was like 50 or 100 people that responded to it. I mean, dozens, maybe even hundreds of shares that happened. For it. it was... Uh, 
at the time it really set a benchmark for me right. for it. And so David somehow saw this and called me up and said, "Well, would you like to come see Munchkinville?" And of course, I, oh, I said, I, 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 "I'd love to." It was the first time I'd met him. And when I asked him, you know, what did he think of the rumor? He said, "Well, I kept it going." And any any time somebody brought it up to him about these houses, he'd just go, "Oh yeah," that he'd is. shake his head like <laughs> it was the truth on that there. So right. he helped further the yeah, urban yes, legend. Yes, um, the bathroom there, um, maybe luxurious in its time. And I'll tell you, if you think about when these homes were built in the 1930s, to find a bathroom of that caliber when there were no other homes around. That would be a godsend. Well, it was astonishing to me when I went in there that it actually things were so advanced because when you look from the outside, you just think, well, it's just a, a hole in the ground with a little wall around. And we got in there, it was a, a full home. It, it is functioning. It, yes, it is. absolutely. Yes, I, I know. It, it, to look at it from the outside, it'd be like an old rundown Boy Scout camp. But when you walk through it, I mean, like I say, the significance of them is... It's just unbelievable. Honey. That bathtub probably needs a little bit of work. Maybe. Might, might. might need a little grout here and there. Uh, an, another, <laughs> another one of the doors, okay, that, right. uh, again, I think is, I mean, these things have to be the original doors, you know, from they 90 years ago. And that light fixture is really... The light fixture? Yes. Oh, on the right up there, yes. That's yeah. really... Well, that might have been modernized to, chic. like, the 1950s. Yes, it might be. Yes, you know. Yes, that's the way they did lights in Ireland when I was a kid. You know, we got electricity. The bulbs were this size and hanging up from a piece of wire out of the ceiling. So, you know. Well, because I'll tell you, I would doubt that there was running electricity to these homes when they were built. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That looks like an added thing. And something added on 20 right. years after it was constructed. Exactly. Yeah. There's another another shot here. Yep, I'm trying Two to think. More. This is the room you have to pass through to get to the master bedroom. And as you can see, that is a closet over on that side that at some point was built into it. And what's difficult to see is how they used the cement against the rocks to square off mm -hmm. the closet. Right. You know, and uh, if you were close, you could tell, you could see the ingrain of the wood mm. pressed into the cement as it was allowed to dry so you would end up with a square shape. Right. Mm -hmm. And the beams are beautiful. They are. Oh, and they're huge. I mean, they're not yes. just like 4 by by 12s. They're, they're like that's right. 8 by 24s. That's so they're, right. they're they're gigantic beams. Yeah. Um, I think we are in the master bedroom now. There is a secondary fireplace and I'm pretty sure of that. Uh when I say it has been about 7 or 8 years since I've been in this home, but um, there is a small fireplace in the master bedroom and then a sort of inset here that I think was a fireplace, whoops, a fireplace before over on this side. Smart to have those and necessary for heating because there certainly wasn't a lot of insulation there, no electricity, no other heating. Yeah, I'm sorry, just, we've got somebody coming in. I'm asking uh, Angel to uh, watch the noise level. I wanted to take a close-up of the pictures. I mean, those are, again, original pictures with the latches done on them. I, I don't even know what they call I mean, those are French panes, maybe? Is that what those are called? But it's... Well, nowadays, yeah, that is what's called French doors, but that is not what French doors are in Europe. French doors in Europe are uh, huge panes of glass that mm. open this way. The uh -huh. hinges are on either side, and the door will open. It will swing in from the top. The window will swing in from the top, so you can walk out. These are American French doors. I I would buy into that. If if a remodel were ever done, I I, I think I would those hope are some. They keep those. I would too. I, I think that sometimes the originality of pieces like That's that right. need That's to be right. retained if they can be. Oh, proof that I was in there. That's right. I did take a couple of pictures. Okay, I think we are, I'll get through those, and back to the, that I believe is. That is where you time out. That, yeah, that is my time out chair. Your time out chair, or in the closet chair. Yes. This is, we're back to the living room here. Okay, I shot the living room from another angle. The only piece of furniture that I saw in the whole thing, I mean, if you notice, in none of these rooms, did I really see furniture? And yet, this is where the owner lives. So I, I wonder how he lives, okay, in some of those. But he's making do up there. 
I need to lose some weight. There we go, the kitchen. You know, a, a luxury kitchen. I don't think it's anything that uh, Emerald would be happy with. But uh, again, if you were out in the middle of nowhere, that fridge might be an original one. As I look it at it there. It might be. It might be. Love nice the doors. door. Look at the Great size of hinges. those hinges. Yeah. The hinges are just amazing. Yeah, and it's, it doesn't pick up a whole lot, but the latch here. It's <laughs> literally like a latch that would be on a dungeon. It is. Those windows again, and now back to the outside. Again, that view. Yes. I think we're wrapping up near the end here. And then the front door just backing up a little bit. I, I almost feel like this is one of the other homes that I mistakenly added in this batch. But now it's been so long since I've been there. Yes, oh, yeah. I wouldn't recognize one from the other one either, to tell you the truth. I did sit on this back patio over here for a while and talk to David, and it was a very nice afternoon. Yes, I was outdoors with him as well, and he waters and waters and waters, and you wonder why, but he does. This is the small one that I said was uh, close to that one there that we just looked at, but is in really too poor of shape to be lived in. You can see the walls are just down to two by fours in some places on it, and the stone does not connect anymore. Pieces of it have fallen down. So uh, the best patio view, that really shows it. It's really great. I, I think Nice roof on that one. Well, that's the one that is rented out as a vacation rental. Oh, so we're picking up ladies. a little bit of it, yes, yes. In, in that shot there. Yeah. And then my last batch here, just a handful of pictures. This is the other one that's being used primarily for storage. I did walk through it, but there were places like uh, the roof is not totally solid and the carpet was squishy under feet and it felt yucky. So and that I, I one didn't... has two fireplaces as well. Yes, yes it does. One in the bedroom, one in the living room, <coughs> if I recall right. Excuse me. But um, it, it had the best views and the positions of all mm. the homes. It was the one that you could sit on the back and not see any of the other homes that would be off to the side of you. And it had a, a rooftop um, a viewing place on it, a rooftop patio. Again, the step down going towards the front door, lending to the uh, misperception of uh, small people yes. living there. Yes, yes. Up there. But this is the place of Munchkinville in Palm Springs. But those are worth a fortune, though. They are. Uh, the agent who gets it, and I think, uh, I, I think it should be you. I mean, it well, will earn a it, nice... I think it should be me, too. Do you? Yes, yeah. yes. But well, that's okay which with me. Why, now, which is why I visit him. Five to seven years ago, I would have fought you for the listing. Yes. These days, I would help you get it if well, I could. Yes, well, then it should be ours. Okay. <laughs> I'll work that deal out with you if we could just get David to sell, but I think he's still got a, another decade or so there before he's... I first met him when he would ride his bike up that very steep hill. I had a listing up there, and years later... Somebody called me and said to me, uh, is this the smashing agent? And I said, well, it is. And he said, you won't know me. And he gave me his name. And I said, oh, I do know you. You're the man that rides the bike. And yes. from that moment on, we were friends because I recognized who he was. He's an architect, you know. Yes, I know. He showed yeah. me pictures uh, because he used to live down in Airby Commons. Right. And he had a, a house there that he sold for a nice chunk of money, and somebody else put up Everything two houses, I think, has, on his lot. Bless his heart, he sells for a nice chunk of money. Yes, he's, he's very good at that. He is. But he and I have gone out to lunch several times, and we've gone by various buildings that I didn't know were architecturally significant, and he pointed them out. Mm -hmm. So he's very interesting in that way. No, no, I, I can see that. Uh, this is the neighborhood again from an aerial, but with the addresses uh, laid over it. House for sale. Home for sale. Home for sale. Home for sale. Home for sale. We've got a home. Available now. <laughs> Perfect, right? Actually, we were thinking of Rome. I know an agent there. Look at this view. This place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. We've been looking at Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I know an agent there. 
Welcome to Jamaica. Oh, I love it. But we're thinking about Tokyo. I know a guy. 